wanted to make a video on transplanting this philodendron. It's called uh, Florida ghost philodendron. No uh, relation to the ghost chilies, I hope. Probably not. Nah. I wanted to do that, but I was listening to Albert King Blues Power, so I had to wait for that to finish because it's like a really cool song. So anyway, here we are. This is how I went ahead and potted up this philodendron. Let's do something different. Pot a plant, all right? It's not really fish, but what the hell? So what do I got? I got a pot, ceramic pot. Got it from one of the big box stores. And it's got a drain hole in the bottom, about a half an inch. I'm going to put a pebble over the bottom of the hole for one reason and one reason only, to stop the potting soil from sifting out. I don't put a layer of gravel at the bottom. I know Martha Stewart said that. And I've seen other gardeners say that, but I used to teach horticulture and there was this one video I would use in my soils classes about water movement through soil. And anytime you have two different interfaces, something fine, something coarse, it stops the water dead. So it really doesn't help it drain. So I've got this uh, leftover, well, it's not really leftover, it's a whole damn bag full of uh, potting soil that I used when I potted up the Jungle Val scenario and the Amazon Swords. For the, uh, oh, there's a rock or something here. A uh, piece of, who knows. So for the Jungle Val scenario and the Amazon Swords for the tub outside. And hopefully you saw that video. Got this plastic, uh, I don't know, it's like a pint or half pint. Probably a pot potato salad thing. We got a place here in the desert. They make the best potato salad. It's a, a little Jewish, it's not so little, a little Jewish deli. There's one in Palm Springs, there's one down the street here in Palm Desert, and they are really good. And this soil is absolutely bone dry. So what I'm gonna do, just cause it's easier to be at this all day, it's mostly full and there's some big clumps. You know, I always run my hands through it, big clumps like that, I just bust them all up best I can. I used to make my own potting soil. I would buy different media, blend it together myself, and that's just not practical for me now. So I'm using this. Another rock. So let's see what we got here. I got this at the grocery store. Uh, no genus. Well, it's philodendron, it says. And it says it's called Florida Ghost Philodendron. And, and I really like the leaves. It's got white stuff on it. And it's probably some sort of pesticide that they sprayed on it when they when it left the nursery. Um, could just be water staining, but I got a feeling that's what it is. There's a little bit of a broken leaf on this, the, the back of this leaflet, or the, the back of this. I think these are called, the shape would be a hastate leaf. They're really pretty. And there's a whole new leaf coming out right here. It's just starting to unfurl. And it's on a little, a little bitty, like a wood skewer. So what I'm gonna do is just set that in here, pot and all, and push it down. Make sure I got a good depth. I want to be, I want the surface of the, this philodendron to be about a, about an inch below the surface of the pot. And that way, when I want, I can actually take this thing outside and, or put it in a sink somewhere and saturate and, and really drench it. Spread your fingers out this way I do it and wrap them around the stem of the plant. Turn it upside down. Oh, look at that. Bonus. Two pot. So that was a cash po. This one didn't have a hole in it. It was just a pot to hold a pot. And it's not root bound. I don't need to do anything to this except just drop it in. And I broke the, the soil down away from the top of the root ball. Just spread that out. And then I will backfill this. This is actually buried a little deep. I'm going to pull it up. In fact, it doesn't have much of a root ball at all. So I just raised it all. You see, I broke most all that soil away. Nice thing about philodendrons, you can do that. It's not going to hurt it. So I'm just going to fill this. Don't let people tell you not to pack it down. Because all it's going to do is pack down anyways. You start watering it. And the whole thing's going to settle in way deep. Pack it down. In fact, the roots will find their way through well-packed soil better and easier than they will through really loose soil like that. There it is. The glaze goes down inside the pot about an inch. 
So I've filled this right about to the glaze. And a lot of times what I will do is cover this soil with sand because we get those fungal gnats from time to time from wet potting soil. And the eggs could very well come in with this stuff. And then there's a little uh, twist tie here. I'm going to pull that off and get this little skewer out of the way and save it for something else. Then I bought a three pack of these philodendron stakes and they're all folded up and you can straighten them out. And the package even said you can corkscrew them or do whatever you want with them. But I'm going to straighten it out and I want this to sort of wrap, set it right about there next to the, right next to the stem of this plant. Push it right down to the end of the spike. Pull this around and slowly, I'm not even going to do that because I don't want to bust it. There we go. Let's just turn this so it's wrapped around this. I'm going to try and straighten this out a little more. When I ordered these, I wasn't paying attention. These aren't really what I wanted. I wanted fatter ones uh, that came straight. Pay attention to what you order. Okay, well, I like this green stretchy nursery tape. And I'm going to use a piece of that down here to uh, secure. I don't really like these. I want fatter ones. So I cut a piece off. I love this stuff. Use it for years. Um, a couple ways you can do it. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll tie it off first uh, around the stake and then tie that to the plant. But in this case, I'm just going to find a spot that I want to put it, wrap it around the stem of this philodendron, and then go back around the other side and put a handy little square knot in there. And it's not going to slip. So that's one. Scissors. Cut the excess off. Make it look like you know what you're doing. All right. And then another one up here below this new shoot because that's going to be really brittle. So I'm cutting a piece off that's, I don't know, it's a foot long or so. Same thing. We'll come around from this side. Tie it on your side. And this should have been longer. You can stretch it. That's the nice thing about it. Try and get it kind of even. And again, a square knot. Because I think square knots look better than the old granny knot. But you know what? It's not important at all. All right. There we go. Not too bad, huh? A lot of times what I'll do is mix fertilizer in the potting soil. And I failed to do that this time. I have a handful of Osmocote little pellets here and I will mix that around the top and just sort of till it in if you will with my fingers and then I think I am going to go ahead and sand over the top of this thing. I have pool sand that I use in my tanks and I'll just pour some in and my, my mother-in-law suggested this to help I don't know if it eliminates but reduce the fungal gnats from the wet potting soil. And when you water, you just want to be a little gentle so you don't dislodge the sand. And let me take you off the tripod so you can see this thing. Okay, so here we are. Wrapped around the... I don't know what this is. If it's the uh, core, I guess, uh, coconut fiber. Or, God, it could even be like palm fiber. Um, I got it from Amazon. And the plant came from Stater Brothers, local grocery uh, company, grocery store company. And again, I got the pot from, I think it was Lowe's. And you can see where I tied the green stretchy tape around here and here. I could have used, I probably could have used, probably should have used just this jute twine. Uh, it would look more natural. In fact, I might just tie that on. And then after I get it tied on, cut the, cut the green stretchy tape away. So, in fact, that's what I did. Put the twine on there instead. Take the green green tape off. I like the green tape a lot. It's really nursery tape. It stretches, and it's a lot less likely for the knots to slip out. And, and this almost looks like it could start to slip out down here, but I don't think I'm going to worry about it. But it looks it doesn't stand out like that green tape does. So, anyway, that's it. Let me know what you think. How easy is it to uh, pot up a houseplant? Houseplants and fish tanks go really well together. And I suppose this particular houseplant, if I had the vertical room, I could have just washed away all the soil um, and dangled the roots right in a tank somewhere. But this will go in the kitchen on, on our kitchen counter uh, next to all the other houseplants that we're starting to collect. And it'll look really cool. 
So anyway, like I always say, I appreciate you very much for hanging out with me and thanks for looking.